Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Another great day we got coming up for you with uh, Manny Pacheco, our forgotten Hollywood historian, uh, professor, on-air personality, just about everything, and my great partner, John Coleman. How are you doing, John? How are you doing, Manny? How are hey. you? <laughs> Manny, you are the man. I see you everywhere. If it says Hollywood, it says Manny Pacheco. <laughs> mm. I wow. saw you, um, now this is this is not uh, too recent, but it's not too fur too long ago. I saw you uh, uh, reporting on, I don't know how to describe it, but it was a very nice video. You were interviewing people about a brand new uh, dedication in Hollywood of a an alley, uh, a, a, a historic alley where the, a lot of historic films were made. Um, and I remember, quite frankly, you and I, I don't know if we went there together, but I've been there. You know, its it was just an alley between two buildings. Yeah. And here well, you are at the at the dedication with cameras and announcements and whatever. Tell us about this alley. Well, it's called the Chaplin Keaton Lloyd Alley in honor of Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Harold Lloyd. It's an alley that's on uh, Cahuenga and Cosmo between those two areas. And uh, it's um, it was just an unnamed alley until Hollywood Heritage and a, uh, a group of people, which I'll get into the names shortly, decided to uh, dedicate this alley because three iconic films were made there. Uh, Charlie Chaplin's The Kid, Buster Keaton and uh, Cops, and Harold Lloyd, Safety Last. Now, Safety Last might be the most iconic of the, of the photo memories because that's the actual film where you see Harold Lloyd hanging from that famous clock. Right. So that's, right. a, that's, a, that's a pretty important photo. But all three of these films were made there. But I have to tell you, at least two dozen silent era films starring iconic comics, as I just described, and other stars like Douglas Fairbanks, Oliver Hardy, and even Harry Houdini. These were, um, these were pioneering films, and there might even be more than two dozen. Remember, 80% of all silent films are considered lost. They might have made 100 films there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. But there was also uh, pioneering uh, female filmmakers, Lois Weber, Grace Kennard, they all shot uh, a lot of scenes from this iconic alley that is now named Chaplin Keaton Lloyd right. Alley. Well, we forget, we, we, we uh, moviegoers, um, forget that in the, particularly in the 20s and the 30s when Hollywood was just really building, um, they just used whatever they had available. Right. <laughs> you know, and... Hey, you need an alley? There's one right down off Cahuenga. Go on down there and let's have the crew show up at 2 o'clock. Well, this is a good alley, uh, and it, it was centrally located as part of, the, you know, what Hollywood was then. I mean, we're talking in the teens, you know, the 1915, 17. Sure. I mean, when they first got here, a lot of a lot of orange patches and, 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 and dirt roads. I mean, when they started paving the roads, this was one of the uh, – Hollywood Boulevard was the main thoroughfare, and – you know, Cahuenga is just an arm's throw from a, a, th a stone's throw, that rather. You don't throw your arm, you throw your stone. A, a stone's throw from a vine. And yeah. so a lot of their studios, a lot of their independent studios that, that house the work of Chaplin or Keaton particularly, but Harold Lloyd as well, uh, were just around the corner. And so it was a very convenient alley to use. Yeah, and uh, and so in its heyday, it was a very popular place. But now, it is surrounded by lots and lots of uh, businesses of all kinds: hotels, uh, sure. restaurants, uh, 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 tourist curiosity shops. And so, this became an important dedication for the business community uh, that surrounded this alley. Because let's face it. If you're going to spend money and you live in, let's say, Iowa or Nebraska and you want to visit your favorite places in Hollywood, obviously the the go to places like, you know, the um, the Grauman's Chinese Theater. Uh, it's not called Grauman's anymore, but you remember it as that. Sure. 
the uh, of course the uh, Walk of Fame, where you you can actually see all of these uh, different right. stars, the right. Holly, you know, the stars, and of course there's also the uh, the footprints and the the handprints in front of the um, the Grauman's Theater, and there's the Egyptian Theater. But I mean, we're, they've just opened up the museum, you know, for the Academy uh, of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, but that's way down in the Fairfax strip district along the Miracle right. Mile. So we got to start finding places. I mean, Hollywood Heritage is a great place to go right across the street from um, from the Hollywood Bowl, and that's the, that's the old barn. I mean, yeah. if you consider how how really old fashioned this area was, two of our most iconic places to visit now is a barn and an alley. Yes. <laughs> yes. By the way, the the alley really is a a celebration uh, uh, of uh, silent film. Yes, uh, and, and, the and so my question for you is that uh, uh, I've been out of town uh, uh, on holiday, and I actually missed some local coverage. Are there uh, are there displays of uh, maybe uh, uh, motion picture displays of Keystone Cops and and other things, or at least of the films that were made in that alley of other stars, other than these these uh, very prominent stars that you've uh, mentioned. Right. Well, first off, let me answer that first question. It was a celebration of the first ever National Silent Movie Day. What a way to kick off a day. And yeah. I think that's going to make this day every year an annual event. It's going to be hard to top the first one. To answer your second question, at this point, mostly everything is going to be made in, into a mural. It's going to be a real look-see. It's located right by the subway station, uh, subway uh, 1640, right there at Cahuenga. So I would imagine within the station itself, Art, there's going to be um, video streamed into the subway. When people get out, they'll be able to see maybe uh, segments from The Kid or, or Cops or, or maybe a Safety Last or other films that were made there, just yeah. to remind audiences of where they are. Some of the people that were on hand that's going to make sure that this is going to happen. I, I have to start with the film historian John Bankston. He was the gentleman who first came across the alley. He pushed this uh, to Hollywood Heritage. He is really the 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 vessel, the instrument uh, of making this happen. And it, I would be remiss if I didn't mention John. It's hard work. But there are others. Hollywood Heritage President Brian Curran, uh, Cinecon Film uh, Festival President Stan Taffel, who you saw that interview of, John. Yes. On hand that particular day, but I, I would suspect that the uh, families... Uh, uh, are going to be very active in preserving the legacies of Chaplin, Keaton, and Lloyd. And on hand that particular day was uh, the gr a great granddaughter of Buster Keaton, and her name is Keaton Talmadge. Talk about Hollywood mm -hmm. royalty. I mean, being related to Buster Keaton and also related to the Talmadge family were two silent film icons, Norma and Constance Talmadge. No kidding. She's yeah, related I mean, she, to both families. Yeah, well, they were involved. I mean, I guess uh, they married within their families, and yeah. and Keaton Talmadge has the names of both. How about that? Great Suzanne, name. Yeah. yeah, Suzanne Lloyd is a uh, is a Hollywood historian who has preserved the legacy of her grandfather, and traveling all the way from Switzerland. Remember that Charlie Chaplin's family. For the most part, he spent the last mm -hmm. years of his life, and now his family live in Switzerland. Yeah. There's a there's a museum in Switzerland that's that's uh, dedicated to the work of Charlie Chaplin as well. Well, Kara uh, 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 Chaplin, who is the granddaughter of Charlie Chaplin, a model, uh, an actress. She's also an advocate for pr film preservation. She flew all the way from S Switzerland to be at this event. Mm. And you got to talk to them all, our yes. own Manny Pacheco. Yeah, yes, I was very fortunate. But, you know, uh, the folks at Hollywood Heritage are not like other folks. They're very uh, proactive in their networking abilities. They're, they're not going to bring out these folks and then hide them. They're going to yeah. make them available. And, and it became a real celebration. It was just so much fun. Everybody had a great time. Um, Oh, other other people that were there, I should mention, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my good friend, uh, Keith Coogan, um, owns owns copies of my book. Uh, he is the grandson of Jackie Coogan, who was hmm. the kid in the movie, The Kid. Yes. He yes. was also Uncle Fester in The Addams Family, for yes. those who remember. Yeah. Uh, David Tothero was there. He is the grandson of Chaplin's 
primary cameraman for 20 years, Roland Tothero. So, I mean, there were real dignitaries who really speak to the traditions of the 1920s, except this was 2020. I mean, this, yeah. is, this was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, Hollywood is Americana. Yes. Um, I mean, it's world history for everybody who loves films. Mm -hmm. But it's really Americana. Right. And I think everybody in the United States just whatever their image of, quote, Hollywood is or motion pictures, um, I think they have an affinity for these little tidbits of the early days of film uh, well, and Hollywood. That's what my books are about, basically t tying Americana with Hollywood history. And this sure. was this is what I call metaphorically and, and this time literally a Hollywood and Vine moment since we were just a block away. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, what's interesting is uh, I've known about that alley uh, for quite a while. And it was just, you know, you'd walk past it and somebody would say, oh, by the way, that's where. Right. You know, the kid was filmed in Chaplin. So we all know where Chaplin Studio was. Now it's A&M or was then A&M and now it's something else. So I think what's going to happen is this alley is going to be on the tour now. On the tour buses are going to stop there for the That's first time. Right. Oh, Because no, it's no. not just an alley anymore. That's right. It's, it's going to be a go-to place. Sure. I couldn't sure. agree with you more. I think, I think, personally, I think that that'll be a place where they're going to film future productions. Why not? La La Land. Okay, I'm 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 thinking though a couple of things though, if they ever did a film on this alley and the films that were made there, I bet that they build the alley on a soundstage. <laughs> and it don't they, they don't go to the alley. And by the way, I have to tell you, it's a good thing that I wasn't involved in putting this thing together because I can imagine me uh, having all the interviews done with you know people going. And then having a big title card coming up, okay, explaining what my question was, okay, and then have the person respond, and then to and with music going on in the background, having a piano player, okay. Yeah, you so know what, it, Art, you are absolutely correct. It's a good thing you weren't involved. <laughs> See, something, always something that the three of us can agree on. I, that's what I like about us. <laughs> Although, you anyway, know, what, Manny, it's on second thought that was kind of a cute idea. That would have been for a, for a moment there. That might have been kind of cute. Oh, one more person that was there. Yeah, I, I have to mention a uh, councilman, Mitch O'Farrell, another individual that I know. Um, he's a very nice uh, and very proactive councilman in the area. He was there to offer proclamations of National uh, Silent Film Day and, of course, uh, uh, to promote the alley and, of course, uh, honor Hollywood heritage for their efforts and, and John Bankston in, in particular. So it, it, all around, it was a good day for Hollywood. Okay, it was a, you missed the name. What was, who's the councilman? Uh, Mitch O'Farrell. Oh, okay. Sorry, oh, I missed that. Mitch O'Farrell. Yeah, it was a good day for Hollywood. It was a good day for Los Angeles. And it was a particularly good day for an, a, a, an unnamed alley now to be named Chaplin Keaton Lloyd Alley. Yeah, Excellent. and what we'll do... Uh, Manny, we'll add a link to your video interviews uh, at the bottom of this video. Okay. So people can, can watch and follow up on that. That yeah. would be awesome. That would be really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're the go-to guy if you need to know about Hollywood. So we're very pleased that you're part of the Celebrating Act 2 team. Thank you. Yeah, we were on hand. Celebrating yeah. Act, Act 2 was there de facto. Dare I say, <laughs> you were the silent partners. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.